For the final part of this topic discussion, we are going to work through a full database example. Now there's a few things to remember before we start. Previously we indicated that you need to complete a few steps in order to successfully design a ERD diagram and to subsequently design and develop a database. For example, you would need to go and identify all the entities. You need to identify the relationships between the entities, meaning that you need to look at the cardinality, whether it's a one-to-one, -one, a one-to-many or many-to-many -many relationship. You need to go and look at the optionality, indicating whether there's a required or optional element linked to that element, to that entity. And finally, you need to resolve the entities if you go further and develop the database schema. So let's go and look at an example where we've got a doctor with patients. So what we see on our left hand side, the 10 steps or the 10 lines, these are actually our enterprise or business rules. So these rules will guide us to determine the entities as well as the relationship between those entities. And from this we will also be able to determine the cardinality and optionality. So let's look at the first one. In instruction number one, we see a doctor can be scheduled for many appointments, but may not have any scheduled at all. So we said that when we want to identify entity, it typically relates to a thing, an object or a person, something that we want to gather information on. So if we look at this one here, we see that we've got a doctor, so we might need doctor information and we might need appointment information. So the first entity is doctor. The next entity is appointment. Now, just looking at number one, we know that there's some sort of relationship between doctor and appointment. Now, let's go and read that statement again. A doctor can be scheduled for many appointments. So many in this instance, which will be linked to appointment, indicates the cardinality, can be indicates that it's optional so that's going to indicate the optionality for that entity so we're going to see a doctor can it's optional schedule many appointments now if we look at the second part but may not have any scheduled at all also again affirms and it indicates that it's optional let's look at the next one each appointment is scheduled with one doctor so now we're referring to that section of the relationship so each appointment is so it means it's required to indicate required we're just going to create that line is scheduled with exactly one doctor so we can't have an appointment where there's three doctors involved let's look at statement number three a patient can schedule one or more appointments so at this stage we know that appointment is an entity and it seems as if patient would be one too because we would typically record patient information. So we know there is a link between an appointment and a patient. We go to step number four. One appointment, okay sorry, step number three, a patient can schedule one or more appointments. So a patient can, meaning it's optional schedule one or more appointments so a patient can schedule one or more appointments step number four one appointment is scheduled with exactly one patient meaning that you can't have an appointment if there's no patient present step number five if we read that an appointment must generate exactly one bill a bill is generated by one appointment so at this stage, again, we know that appointment's an entity, but now we find that there's bill. So we might need to record information about the bill as well. So bill is another entity. So an appointment must generate one bill. So appointment must generate one bill. So it's required. A bill, sorry, a bill is generated by one appointment so that's a one-to-one -one relationship required on both sides now if we look at number six one payment is applied to one bill 
So now we know that we've got another entity payment. So payment is applied to one bill. A bill can be can be paid off over several payments, meaning that it's optional. We might not have made a payment yet, but we can actually go and make many payments. Okay, then they continue with step number seven. A bill can be outstanding having nothing yet paid on it. So that just confirms that it's optional. Now let's look at number eight. Now we see we've got a pay one patient can make many payments. So we've got patient, we've got payments. We already know that those two entities exist. So we just need to go and create that relationship. So a patient can make many appointments, sorry, many payments. So it's optional and they can make many payments. A payment should be made by only one patient. So in that indicates it's required. We look at number nine, we're almost done with this example. Some patients are insured by an insurance company. So now we need to think about insurance. So we know there's a link between patient and insurance. So if we look at it, some patients are insured by an insurance company, meaning that it's optional. Not everybody are insured by an insurance company. If they are insured, they can only carry insurance with one company. So in this case, we know it's a two-one relationship because you can't have insurance with multiple medical providers. If we look at number 10, an insurance company can have many patients. So insurance company can have many patients. So at this stage, it would seem as if it's optional now you might ask me why is it indicating it's required think about it can we have insurance companies without any patients the probability for that is probably no so in this case any insurance company should have multiple patients step number 10 an insurance company can have many patients carrying their policies for patients to carry the insurance insurance company will make payments so now we see that there's a link between insurance co insurance company and payment each payment is made by exactly one insurance company so an insurance company can make or sorry should make multiple payments if it's linked to a patient and a pay payment should be made by insurance company or otherwise directly by a patient so what we have in front of us is a simple ERD diagram. We could have extended this by bringing in a database schema where we would have gone and indicated the attributes that might have been presented in each one of these six entities. So that concludes our discussion about databases. So as part of the support of audio and video, I would recommend that you go and look at these two files on YouTube what is a database and then what are relational database concepts so please when you have time go to youtube search for these video clips and just look at them because they also explain certain concepts which might make it a little easier for you to understand now before we conclude try to answer the next set of questions what is an attribute how does it relate to an entity so Go through that section and make sure that you understand the term attribute and entity. Number two, define the term database. And how is a database different from a database management system? Number three, what is a database schema? And what is its purpose? Number four, what is the difference between DDL and DML? Now again, just a small hint, both of these relate to SQL. Number five, create an ERD and corresponding database schema to explain the information that is saved in the context, contact section of your cell phone, as well as the relationship between these entities. So if you look at the context, contacts section in your cell phone, 
we would typically have things such as our contacts you would have one or more contact numbers you might have one or more email addresses and you might have something like your relationship to those contacts so try to use those four entities and see if you can determine the different types of relationships and requirements for those.